Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another Glacial Geek Kill Team Battle Report. I am Phil, the Glacial Geek, coming to you here from Savannah Line Games in Pooler, Georgia, where I will be fighting a 100-point Kill Team Arena battle between my Blood Angels and Neil's Demons of Zinch. So the story that we've got here is that these uh, veterans were sent in to go clear this uh, place of a demonic incursion that had occurred uh, that was here. And they were told to go in there and slaughter all of the denizens of the warp that had escaped into here and bring it back into control for the Imperium of Man. Uh, we are going to be playing the objective called Desperate Destruction. Uh, essentially what it is is you've got four objectives on the table here underneath those doors there. Uh, if at the end of the battle round you control one of those objectives, you score a point. If at the end of the battle round you, score, you control both objectives closest to your opponent's uh, deployment zone, you score two points instead. And if you control the, uh, what is this called? The uh, emergency hatch, which is basically this middle hallway here by having more uh, models wholly within there, uh, you score an additional point. Uh, so for a maximum of nine points from uh, that primary objectives there. We then have three secondary objectives, which will come up. We'll, they're held secret until you start scoring points from them. And we will go uh, with that going forward. So that is the story. That is the mission. Before we go any further, though, let's show you the two kill teams are going to be fighting it out. So for the Blood Angels, my kill team will consist of, from left to right here, a veteran sergeant as the leader with a bolt pistol and chainsword. I then have six vanguard veterans. I have a combat specialist with a thunder hammer. I've got a zealot specialist with a chainsword and bolt pistol. Sniper specialist with a chainsword and bolt pistol. And then three more regular uh, vanguard veterans with bolt pistol and chainsword. And for the demons from left to right here, we have his iridescent, who is his leader. We've got a pink horror with the icon of flame, who is his comm specialist. Veteran specialist is going to be a regular uh, pink horror. And a pink horror with an instrument of chaos is going to be his demolitions expert. And then we have three more pink horrors. All right, so those are the kill teams going over deployment here. We've got my sniper specialist back here, my combat specialist two of the regular vanguard vets in front of them we've then got my zealot specialist we've got a regular guy and we've got my leader over on this side going to deployment for the demons of zinch we've got two regular pink cars we got his veteran specialist and his leader over here we then have a demolitions expert the comm specialist and a regular guy over on that side so that is going to be it for the deployment we will now roll off to see who has initiative going into turn one I rolled a nine, my opponent rolled a six. So we'll come back to you after movement phase for the Blood Angels here on turn one. All right, movement phase for the Blood Angels here. This guy moved up here, opened the door. Uh, these guys all then advanced out of here. He got a pretty good roll and moved up there, uh, contesting that door over here. These guys, uh, one guy moved over here and opened this door to get that objective. The uh, leader moved up, opened the door again for this guy to advance. He didn't get a good roll, so he just got up to there with his advance, and that is where he ended up. So that's going to be it for the movement phase for the Blood Angels. We'll come back to you after movement phase for the Demons. All right, movement phase for the demons here. All these guys moved up to the door. They couldn't open it because uh, if there's a guy standing there, you can't open it when you end your move uh, movement next to it. So he couldn't open the door. He managed to do a good job as Hodor over here, holding that door. These guys, he moved up and opened the door because there was no one uh, behind it over here. And then those guys moved up through it, looking on Madubra over here. So that's gonna be it for the movement phase. We'll come back to you with the psychic phase. Icon so first, flame. we're going to have him using his uh, Icon of Flame. It's gonna be on a six up. No. And the demolitions guy is going to smite into him over side here. Bolt. Or side bolt, sorry. Oh, do you want that or no? Probably no. not. No, so he's gonna spend a command point to re-roll that. Doesn't feel like popping himself that early. And it does go off on a 10, yep. so that will be a mortal wound. Uh, so let's see if he is out of action. On a six, he would be. But I am gonna spend two CP on death denied to keep him around with just a flesh wound. All right, so now my opponent is going to start off the shooting phase with his demolitions guy shooting into Madubro over here. Uh, he's going to spend one CP on mutated flames, which get, makes it AP minus three. Is that right? AP minus three. Uh, the comm specialist is going to make him plus one to hit, so he's going to have two shots here hitting on threes. Getting one hit. Uh, this is going to be strength three, so wounded on a five. No, uh, no wound. And now his comm specialist is going to shoot into Madubro as well. Fours. Hitting on fours. Getting one hit. 
No, no wound. All right, so that is the end of round one. At the end of round one, I score one victory point for holding this objective here. My opponent does not control any objective, so he does not score any point there. So I am in the lead one to zero. Um, so that is gonna be it. There's no uh, morale test that need to be taken here. So we'll now roll to see who has initiative on turn two. I roll a nine, so we'll come back to you after movement phase for the Blood Angels. All right, movement phase for the Blood Angels. He moved into the corridor over here. My combat specialist moved up to the door there, and then he readied himself behind the door over there. And now we're going to have a few charges. So my leader is going to charge into his demolitions and comms there from around the corner so they cannot see them. Uh, four inches will not get him in. I'm going to spend a CP to re-roll that. Three inches will not get him in. So now my Zealot Specialist is going to charge into both of them. So we'll do one at a time here. Overwatch. On sixes. No, not the first guy. Uh, the second guy does get a hit. Wounded on a five. No, no wound there. So he's charge distance is in. And then this guy is going to charge around into both of them over there. Uh, he is in. And then this guy moved up over here. So that's going to be it for movement phase for the Blood Angels. We'll come back to you with the uh, movement phase for the demons. All right, so these guys had to stay in combat for the demons. He moved over here and opened the door. He moved over there and opened the door. And over here, we're going to have one guy. is uh, He's going to ready himself. And then this guy over here is going to try to open the door. So now we are it's contested, so we roll off to see who can open it. With a fill face, I keep that door closed. Oh. And then the next guy is going to try to do the same thing. Uh, tied, so we need to roll off again with the three to five so that door can be opened. All right, so the start of the psychic phase is Icon of Flame is going to try to go into my specialist over here because it's the closest one there. Nope, does not go off. And then over here, this guy is going to try to uh, side bolt into my sniper specialist. That will go off with a 10. So let's see if he is out of action. On a two, he takes a flesh wound, but my opponent's right. going to spend a CP to reroll that. And he's out of action. All right, so I should say at the end of my movement phase, because I had two guys charge, I did get headlong charge, awesome. uh, which is one of the arena bat, uh, the the arena specific objective that I had chosen for mine. So I got one point for that. All right, so starting off the shooting phase, his leader here is going to start us because he's readied into my dude bro over here. So he's going to have two shots, hitting on fives because he's obscured. No, no hits. All right, so now my guy here is going to shoot into his guy over there within half range, and he is obscured though, so hitting on a four. That is a hit. That is going to be a wound. Involve four up. He's good. He's going to be turn the return the favor over here. Hitting on four, so that is going to be a hit. That is a wound. But that is a serve. Woo! And my combat specialist is going to shoot this guy over here. On a four because he's obscured. No, no hit. He's going to shoot into him as well. Uh, one hit there. Uh, no wound. And then he's going to shoot the guy on the left over here on a four because obscured. That is a hit. That is not a wound, though. All right, so that's going to be it for the shooting phase. So now we will go into the fight phase. All right, so now my dude bro over here is going to start us off in the fight phase. Uh, so the Zealot Special is going to attack into the Demolitions with two attacks and one into the Comp Specialist because he's got two base. Uh, two, actually, he's going to do two and two, sorry, because he's also got a chain sword. So it's going to be two into the Demolitions, two into the Comps. Uh, because he gets uh, plus one on the charge uh, because of Zealot, and he gets uh, plus one because of the Chainsword, and two base because of Vanguard Veteran. So we're gonna do the two into the Demolition over here, hitting on threes. That is gonna be two hits. These are going to be wounding on twos, because they would be wounding on threes, but plus one to wound on a turn that they charge being Blood Angels. So that's gonna be two wounds, so we got two four ups. No, fails it, he's popped. And then his two attacks into the comm specialist. That's going to be two hits. That is going to be two wounds because of the Blood Angel special ability. Oh, but he makes them both. So now my regular dude bro is going to attack into his comm specialist with three attacks. That is going to be uh, two hits. That is going to be two wounds. Two four ups. Makes them both again! So now his comm specialist is going to attack into my uh, zealot specialist over there. That is not going to be a hit. And now his blue that popped out over here is going to attack into him. That is a hit, but that is not a wound. All right, so that is going to be the end of the turn. Uh, there are no morale tests that need to be taken right now. Uh, so uh, we're not going to be doing any morale tests here. But at the end of the turn, I score one point here. He scores one point for having the guy over here. 
Uh, I also score an additional point for having the middle uh, objective basically over here. And I scored another point for area uh, for cut apart, which is um, at the end of the fight phase, if I took a mod I made an attack that took a model out of action this phase, I get the point. So I got that point for killing him over there. Uh, putting me at, what is that, two, three, four, five points to my opponent's uh, one point so far. So that is going to be it for turn two. We will now roll to see you as initiative going into turn three. Uh, with a seven, Blood Angels will be going first again. All right, movement phase for the Blood Angels here. He readied himself just because they wanted to keep him in uh, objective range there. He moved up to the other side of the, uh, the board over here. These guys are going to stay in combat, and then these guys are going to charge. So we're going to start with my uh, Dubro over here charging into both of those guys. So we'll do one at a time. That is going to be one hit. That is not a wound, though. The next guy. No hits there, so his charge distance is going to be in. And then my combat specialist is going to charge in as well, and he's in. All right, moving phase for the um, uh, for the demons here. He stayed in combat, as did the blue that is in combat. He moved around over here. He advanced over this way. He stayed still where he was, I guess, readying himself. And these two guys had to stay in combat because they're yep. locked in over there. So now his blue horror here is going to charge into my dude bro, overwatching. No, no hit there, so his charge distance is totally in. <laughs> All right, so into the psychic phase. His guy over here is going to start us off with the Icon of Flame into my Zealot over there. That is not going to go. And now his blue horror here is going to try to uh, psych me over here with a side bolt. And that's going to go off, so it's D3 Mortal Wounds. The first one's the only one that really makes a difference here. Is he out of action? No, on a 2, he takes a flesh wound. It's going to spend a command point to reroll it. So here we go. No, on a three, he takes a flesh wound. All right, so into the shooting phase, he is, my zealot specialist is going to shoot into the blue horror over here. That is a hit. That is a wound. Five up invul save. No. And then my other dude bro is going to shoot into the comm specialist over there. That is a hit. That is a wound. Four up invul save. He's good. All right, so into the fight phase, we're going to start with my dude bro over here, putting all three attacks into his dude bro there, because I've got two base plus one for the chain sword, hitting on threes. That is going to be two hits. These are going to be wounding on twos because of Blood Angel's special ability since he charged. That's two wounds, four up invul saves. Uh, makes one, but fails one, so he is out of action. Or he is, just pops. <laughs> so now his blue horror gets to attack into me over here. Yes. That is a hit. Looking yeah. for a six, though. That's uh. cocked. Uh, that is a wound. With a four, he's good. And then my combat specialist is going to attack into his uh, Dubro over there. Three attacks because he's a combat specialist hitting on fours because it's unwieldy. That is going to be three hits. Wounding on twos because of Thunder Hammers slash Blood Angels. Doesn't make a difference. That's going to be three wounds over there. Three, four ups. No, he is popped. All right, so we're going to start with my guy over here now in the regular fight phase into his comm specialist. Three attacks hitting on threes. That is going to be three hits. Wounding on uh, threes because uh, it's not the first round of combat anymore. So that is still going to be three wounds there. So he's going to have uh, three uh, four-up invul saves. All right, here we go. Three four-up invul saves. No, he fails one of them, so he is going to pop. All right, so because of the placement where he was, he actually could only place one of the blue horrors within a half of an inch of him, and it says if you can't place him within a half an inch, it doesn't happen. So the one guy got placed, the other one did not get to be placed. Actually, so now this blue, the, this, the, brim. the brimstone is yeah. actually going to attack him over here. Two attacks, getting one hit, looking for a six to wound. No, no wound. So now my zealot specialist is going to put two attacks into the blue, one attack into the brimstone. Uh, he doesn't get the plus one attack because he didn't charge this turn. So we're going to go with the, into the blue. That is going to be one hit. That is a wound. Five up invul save. No. So he is going to turn into a brimstone. And then into the brimstone. That is a hit. That is not a wound. <laughs> so now the new brimstone is going to attack. He's going to put two attacks into the zealot specialist, I imagine. Hitting on fours. Getting two <laughs> hits. Wound on sixes. No, ah. no wounds there. And then my dude here is going to attack into his blues. Three attacks. That is going to be one hit. That is a wound. Five up. No, he's gone. All right, so now this guy's going to attack because he's a new guy over there. That's two hits. 
That is one wound. That is a save. Woo! And then we've got these blues over here. So they're both, uh, what are they gonna do? We'll, we'll do this, this guy out. into the combat specialist. Yeah. That's a hit, but that's not a wound. And then this guy into this guy over here. That's a hit, but no wound. Two points. All right, so that is going to be the end of the turn here. We do have a morale test to take because he lost four guys. He has to take a leadership test to see if he is broken. So 2d6, he's got a leadership of seven. Oh, he's good to go. So that is going to be it for turn three. Uh, I scored one point for having this objective and one point for controlling this in the middle here because you have to be wholly within and his dude bro could not get wholly within. That's why I moved over to that side over there. Uh, my opponent scores one victory point for holding an objective over here. Uh, I also scored a second point for having two guys charge in a turn. I scored another point for having uh, killed a model in the fight phase and I scored another point for my third which is thin their ranks at the end of the battle round score one victory point if two or more enemy models were taken out of action in this battle round so that leaves me with uh, two four five uh, six seven eight nine ten points uh, to my opponent's uh, two points uh, so we will uh, now roll off to see who has initiative going into the fourth and final round uh, that is going to be eight to eight so re-roll uh, 11 to 5, so we'll come back to you with the Blood Angels yet again. So. All right, movement phase for the Blood Angels here on turn four. Uh, all my guys are going to stay where they are. He's going to ready himself. Everyone else is going to stay in combat. So we'll come back to you after movement phase for the demons here on turn four. All right, so movement phase. He's going to ready himself. These two guys are going to ready themselves. Not that it makes a difference because they are all locked in combat over here. But now, and these guys are going to stay in combat. So now he is going to charge into all three of these guys over here. So his charges. Everyone's engaged, so no one can fire Overwatch. Out of six, seven inches, he'll get where he needs to be, which was right over there. So he had to declare them all because he couldn't get through here without getting within an inch of my guys. Uh, but because they were declared targets, you can get within an inch and just keep moving over there. And so now his guy over here is now going to charge into my dude bro over there. Mm -hmm. And seven inches will get him in. Sorry, he needs a nine inch charge, my bad. Uh, but my opponent's gonna spend a CP to reroll that. And yeah. get him in with a nine. All right, so into the psychic phase, he is going to cast side bolt over here. That is not going to go off. I brought my reroll. Yeah. My opponent's going to spend his CP to reroll that. And that will go off on a 10. So let's see if he's out of action. Plus one because he's got a flesh wound already. That is going to be a three. But I'm going to spend two CP to have death denied and give him another <laughs> flesh wound. All right. So into the shooting phase now. This guy is going to shoot into the blue horror there. He's going to get a hit. He's going to get a wound. Five up. Nope. No. No. Go with that base one. And then my other guy is going to shoot into the other blue horror there. That is a hit. That is a wound. That is a save, though. And this guy is going to shoot into the uh, brimstone there. That is a hit. That is a wound. That is not a save on the brim. One. All right, so now his pink horror here is going to start us off in the fight phase because he charged. He's going to attack into here. So one attack hit, not a four. No, no hit. All right, he's actually going to spend a command point to reroll that. Oh, into a hit. There you go. Working with the working with the board there, but no wound. And now the leader is going to attack. Two attacks. That is no hits, though. And now he is going to attack into the blue horror over here. That is going to be one hit. That is a wound. Six. No. A five up save. No. And he can't be placed, so he is out of there. All right, the brimstone here is going to attack into my dude, bro. Two attacks. That is two hits. But that is no wound. Now my zealot specialist is going to attack into that brimstone there. That is going to be one hit. That is not a wound. I'm going to spend a CP to reroll that. Into a wound. Six up save. No. And then this guy's going to attack into his leader over here. Three attacks. That is going to be two hits. That is going to be one wound. Mm. One four up save. Yeah, he good. Oh. And then Maduro over here is going to put two attacks into his pink and one attack into the brimstone over there. They're going to be uh, hitting on fours, though, because he's got two flesh wounds. No, no hits on the pink. But a hit on the brimstone. Wound on the brimstone. No save on the brimstone. Nope. All right, so that's the end of turn four and the end of the game. So going over points at the end of this turn, I scored one point for the objective. 
One point for holding the center corridor over here. My opponent scored one point for holding his objective over here. Uh, then uh, he scored two uh, scored a point for having two charges uh, that uh, happened in his turn there. I scored a point for having um, for killing two models in the battle round, and I scored a point for killing a model, at least taking out one model in the uh, in the fight phase. So, uh, at the end of the game there, that leaves me with 14 points, leaving my opponent with, um, what was it? That was, I think, one, two, four. with four points here at the end of the game. So, a resounding victory for the Blood Angels as they manage to come up here and stomp out some demons. So, a ton of fun here. Uh, really kind of shows, like, when you've got these kind of elite uh, armies uh, and I was going up against it turns out to be a horde when they're popping like that and all those guys keep going is that you really have to worry about placement which is everything that I was worried about here so holding the door over here to keep them from getting out here using this guy to block out entry into here to try to contest it all of it was about placing and, and creating bottlenecks so he couldn't get the full force of all his guys out there to attack me uh, is what it kind of comes down to especially when you're playing an arena game like this with uh, an elite army such as this so all my models were from the elite box the book now so pretty cool there so, I hope you guys have all enjoyed this. I certainly have. I have been Phil the Glacial Geek as always. My opponent's been Neil. And until next time, have fun.